So let's find the Condorcet winner in this election. Now in this case, we're looking at a scenario where uh, we have a city council election where the district is historically about 60% Democratic voters and 40% Republicans. Uh, and, and people know the affiliations of the candidates even though it's officially nonpartisan. And so Don and Key here are, happen to both be Democrats and L here is a Republican. And here is the, here is the, uh, election. So let's find the Condorcet winner. Uh, so we need to compare each pair of, of, of voter, uh, of candidates here. So let's compare L to, uh, to Don. So he, comparing L to Don, L is preferred by 342 and Don is preferred by, uh, all the rest of them, which is 512. Um, and so Don is preferred in that comparison. How about L versus, versus Key? Uh, so comparing L to Key, uh, L is preferred there, Key there, Key there. And so L is preferred 342 and Don here is preferred with 512, uh, preferring Key. Sorry, Key. Uh, next, let's compare Don versus key. Uh, and so in that comparison, Don is preferred here, Don is preferred here, and key is preferred here. So key is preferred by 298, and the rest of the voters, the other 556, prefer Don. And so Don here, Don is the, uh, con, Condorcet winner. Now, it's interesting to note here that if this election was being held under the plurality method, uh, who would have won? Here, L would have won under the plurality method. Uh, L wins under plurality. Uh, and so this is another example of, uh, the plurality method violating the Condorcet criteria, which says that, uh, if there's a Condorcet winner, then they should win the election. Now this is also an example where we might run into another problem called insincere voting. Uh, insincere voting. Now insincere voting is when people don't vote their actual preferences. Uh, so if this election was happening under the plurality method, um, the Democratic leadership in, in this, in this counts, in this city might recognize that Don and Key were going to split the Democratic vote. Uh, and instead, noticing that Key is slightly, uh, you know, thinking that Key might be preferred or maybe just liking Key a little better, uh, might encourage voters to vote for Key by, by officially endorsing him. Uh, and then not wanting to see their party lose the election, uh, as would happen in this scenario here, uh, Don supporters may insincerely vote for Key. Uh, really what they're doing is voting against L. Uh, and this is very common in, in American politics, uh, when we have more than three candidates because, uh, you know, if we're doing plurality method, uh, which we usually are, because uh, we end up voting against the people we don't like, uh, and, and when there's a small third party candidate, uh, we usually don't vote for them insincerely sometimes, um, because we have the feeling that they have no chance to win. And so instead we give our vote to maybe our second choice, uh, instead of voting uh, for who actually would be our first choice. And so that is insincere voting, uh, which is a common problem with plurality, as well as some of the other methods we'll look at.